healthy. That's what my motto is. It should be practical, it should be simple, and it should be healthy. So all these three things are in the apple chutney that I'm going to make today. And these apples I harvested from the Black Creek and some of them were given, these red ones were given to me by Mildred. She had it growing in her house. And these little tiny ones are from the Black Creek. They are not as big as last year, maybe because there was not a lot of rain. And I made a batch of chutney yesterday with them because there were so many and I canned some because I make in bulk and I can them and they are good for one whole year, maybe more. And then I went, I was short of the cans and a new thing is you can use, reuse old bottles also for canning. This is the second time I've tried it, but for me, it works good. You can feel that it's not popping out, so it's canned and preserved. And one of the things about apple chutney is that, oops, especially from the forage apples, it costs you maybe less than a dollar for six pounds of chutney. So it's free. So now for the chutney ingredients. We have in the recipe that you have online, it should be in uh, on the website also, the Black Creek website, it says six pounds but I'm going to do it half because it takes a long time for cooking. So we're going to do about three pounds. That's why I made a batch before so that I don't have to do the whole thing and it takes some time to boil. It is really simple. The ingredients are apples, so three pounds apples. And then there is a very little sugar. That's what makes it healthy. And the apples that are foraged, have the perfect sugar and sour content. You don't have to add anything to make it tart. Chutney is usually sweet and salty and sour. So for apples from the trail or apples that are foraged from out that are not sweet and dripping sugary are the best for chutney. So apples, sugar, salt, and there's one new ingredient, some people might not know is black salt. It has a very distinct flavor. It actually comes like crystals like this. They're kind of black, but when they're ground, then it becomes pink and it has a very strong, strong flavor. So just to make it more authentically Indian, the black salt goes really well with apples in Indian cooking and then play, uh, this time I'm going to put crushed chilies because these apples are not, not really red skinned apples. They're kind of, the chutney that I made yesterday is not very visually appealing. It's all brown. So you can put um, the powdered chili powder or you can put chili flakes. And then I have roasted ground cumin. Cumin that we get in the store. I will show you how to roast it if there, is, there are people who don't know the cumin that we get in the store. This is the one that we dry roast and we grind them. So for the first step, I just washed the apples. I started before because I didn't want to take too much time. So these apples are kind of steaming with a pinch of salt. You don't put any water in it. You just put a little salt and let them sweat and then you start. So I kept some, you don't have to peel the apples. This is the good thing about chutney because you want to make some texture in it. You don't want to make very pasty, pasty chutney. So you just cut the apples, core them and chop them. This time I'm trying to cut it really small because half of most of the apples are almost half cooked so chop 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 these are the ones that are in the pot are already reduced i want to show you because of lack of rains see how hard these apples are they taste good but they don't have a lot of juice 
So, and then again, see, some of them are bruised. They might have some worms or I didn't find any worms, but the, the residues kind, you just have, you can trim it out. You can still use it because the flavor of these apples, you can't compare with the flavor of store-bought apples. Whenever you find something that you don't like, trim it out. There you go. <coughs> I've started it. See, it was already getting cooked. I had about half teaspoon of salt before in this, so I'm going to put another half. And then <coughs> half a teaspoon of black salt. When you add black salt, it gives you a really strong smell, like kimchi smell. Those are the those are the chemicals that are in the salt that give it its natural flavor. And then sugar goes in, and then make sure when you're Heat is on high, you keep stirring it. You don't want it to get stuck. We'll cook the sugar and salt in the chutney for a little bit, especially for the new apples because we want them all mushy. Once they get mushy, you're good to put spices in there. Now I'm going to make it really low. And is there? anyone who has never used um, roasted ground cumin if you have not used it then i can show you the trick of how to roast it properly but if everybody knows how to do it then there's no point using this time for it so please let me know in the chat box or you can christina you can tell them to talk out if however it works so i can do that step in between while the apples are getting so anyone who wants to know how to do the cumin and then again cumin is a seasoning that is what we i used to i learned from my grandma but if you don't like cumin or someone's allergic to cumin you can put any other spice that you like because you're going to cook the spice in the chutney. If you do not like cumin or, or you, because some people are allergic to it, you can put any other spice. I've not tried any others, but go over there feeling how you like your sweet and sour spread. Sometimes I use this chutney even for dressing. So what I do is I just blend the chutney with some olive oil and some lemon juice put some additional salt if I like it. And then the flavor of the dressing is really good. It's like apple cumin kind of dressing. This chutney is very versatile. You can use it as a dip. You can use it as a spread on your bread or sandwiches. You can use it in dressing. One time I know I had some guests over and there were like they didn't want to eat, drink anything sweet. So I made a drink out of it, blend it, put some more sugar in it, and then it's a nice drink. So is there someone who wants to know how to roast the cumin? Did we get any chat questions? Do you see any chat questions in the bar? Christina? No chat questions yet, um, but um, Victoria says, actually Victoria just asked right now, how do you roast it? <laughs> Asking for the roasting of cumin? Yeah. 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 So I let this sit on really low and cover it up so that it doesn't burn at the bottom. For roasting cumin, the biggest trick is get a heavy bottom old pan and heat it up really good. Only then you put the cumin in. This was the trick that my grandma told me because if you put the cumin in when the pan is cold, it gets dehydrated faster and then it doesn't get that aroma. And make sure your 
exhaust is on when you roast the cumin because somehow the smoke alarm does not like the roasted cumin smell at all. So I've turned my burner on. Once it becomes really hot, I'm going to put about two teaspoons of cumin and then turn it off or instantly. The heat of the burner and the pot is going to make my cumin nice and coffee brown, like coffee brown. So it's, this one is ground. So after it gets roasted, I'm not going to grind it, but that's, you just grind it in your coffee grinder. So I still don't feel the heat. If I don't feel the heat about one inch away from the pot base, that means it's not hot enough. This um, roasted cumin goes very well in, especially the fruit salad that we make. Chart. The fruit chart, we call it fruit chart. Chart is, is a root word that means licking. That's why chutney is also something that you don't eat in bulk. It's like for a dip, like licking. So fruit chart is also something that you can make with fruits and the, the spices, salt, and you also make, you can make uh, some dressing in it or lemon if you want. Okay, so the pot is hot enough. So I'm going to put the cumin. As soon as it starts smoking, we have to turn it off. And we see the smoke coming. Stirring it, you don't want it to burn. Turn off the gas. There. It crackles and it's getting to be nice and brown. You have to keep stirring it because you don't want one or two getting burnt and the rest dry. There. There, it's done. Now we take out a plate. Is there a plate over there? Yeah. Yes, there is. We have to take it out of the hot pot also because we don't want it to continue heating up there. And the smell, the aroma fills the house. It's so nice, toasty cumin smell. Just let it cool a little bit and then you can grind it. Once you grind it, even these light brown ones, they have dark brown inside. So it becomes nice and dark coffee brown powder. So it doesn't take long. Every time we have to make something, we oh. do it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. The, if we keep it for a long time, the ground roasted cumin, it loses its aroma. It, the aroma is really strong, but it goes away very fast. So you have to make it fresh most of the, like every other week, I, I roast about two, three teaspoons and keep it in an airtight container and I use it as I go. So this was the roasted cumin. Now my apple chutney is already getting mushy, except for the new ones, which I don't mind because I'm going to can them anyways and they will get cooked. So if you see the texture, it's quite thick. In the recipe, I think I wrote, it should be like pasta sauce texture. So that is a variation. I cannot make it pasta sauce because I don't want to put any water in it. It has to be all natural juices. So if the apples are juicy, you can get a thinner consistency like a pasta sauce kind. But this is more like a spread kind of chutney, which is also good for us. We eat it even with our roti. So eating it like another accompaniment of roti and dal and chutney goes really well. Now the last step is adding, you can add the heat according to your choice. We like it spicy, so I'm going to add about half a teaspoon, no, one teaspoon of chili flakes that I just ground in there. They, they will add nice color and one teaspoon of cumin. This cumin gives a very, very nice brown color and also it gives a very good flavor with, along with the black salt. Black salt and cumin, mm, it smells so good. 
you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> it smells really good. And I'll cook it for a little bit because all these spices, I try to cook a little bit because if there is any spore of any fungus or mold or anything, if you cook them, they're sterilized. Yeah, mostly spices are sterilized, but just make sure you keep stirring while you're cooking. Last time I did it, I had a call and I had to scrape the pot. It was, it sticks very fast because it has sugars in it. And then when the sugars get too hot, they kind of stick to the pot. So now the apples are good to go. This chutney is going to be chunky chutney, which is also okay. Another way of making is if you don't like the chunks, you can always um, grate the apples or you can put them in the chopper, chop them, and it will be more like a smooth jam which is also fine but I don't take the peels off the apples because these are organic apples there's nothing sprayed on them I've washed them properly so the apple peels also has nutrients that you can use you are they're good for you so you can always keep the peel there it gives the texture and if you don't like the texture just blend the apples and so this was apple chutney. And next day. What's the next? What is, I have, I, the chutney is there. That's it. You can, if you want to can them, you can can them. Otherwise you just put them in a bottle, keep it in the fridge for, it lasts in the fridge for about a month. It doesn't more go bad, yeah. more than a month. Because the last year that I made apple chutney, it was, Canned, I can it because I make big batches. But when I opened it, it was more than I think two months. More than two months. And I yeah. kept it in the fridge. It. I was trying to save it for this demo, but <laughs> people eat it. <laughs> they they don't want to. Yeah, they they they're yes. hungry people, you know, in this house. <laughs> yeah. So. If they like something, they don't yeah, care. It's organic. It's, it's, it's organic. organic. It's uh, so, natural. It's much healthier, much tastier. Yeah. So this time the chutney is not like a dip. It is more like a spread. So you can use it anywhere you like. For us, we have the option of even rotis or wraps or wherever you want. You bread. can spread the chutney on bread. You can use it with pakoras. Yeah. You can use it with chips as a it's, dip. It's very simple ingredients and very easy to make and costs you no money. Yeah. But in case you don't have foraged apples, you can make them with the tart apples like um, Granny Smith. Yeah, Granny Smith. Yeah. Ambrosia anything which is sour, yeah. yeah. yeah anything anything is, any, any apple which is uh, yeah. sour is yeah. not very sweet. Yeah. Yes. So, and then but the point is we are getting it for free from the nature it's not going to go waste yeah, yeah it looks great. um i had a question so you had black rock, rock salt as an ingredient um i've never really heard of that until now um where can you get it and like what does it taste like um you can get it from any of the indian stores it's Black rock even salt. Chinese store even may have Chinese it. store have it. It's um, well in Indian stores they might have it written like two ships. Black it's salt. They don't write rock, rock salt. salt. Yeah. They write black salt. And there's also there's two or three different like basically it's the salt that they get from the mountains, not from the sea. This it's, is not yeah, sea salt. It's, it's a mountain uh, piece of the it's mountain. It's mined from the mountains. So it has different minerals mixed in it, and most of it is kind of sulfur. So I don't know if you know the smell of sulfur. It has that kind of strong sulfury it's straight smell. Straight from the mountain. There are no chemicals mixed yeah, in there. It's very natural form. Straight from the mountain. You can get the powder form too, like pink powder. 
Yeah, this, it comes in the powder shape as well. Yeah. It's sold as a powder. Uh, yeah. And this was actually a big crystal that I tried to grind into in, in like in a pastel mortar and did it like smaller pieces, but it is it's very it has very strong smell. Yeah, you can get it from Indian store or you can get it from a Chinese store. You have to ask like black salt, black salt or the rock salt. Yeah, rocks rock salt is different. Black okay. salt. Yeah. Okay. Black salt. Do we have a packing? No, yeah. we don't we don't have the crystal then. Okay. Yeah, because it's so much easier to get it uh, brown. But if you if you get the crystal one, it's no problem. You can. It's very amorphous. Like it's very. You can grind you it too. in the coffee grinder. It grinds very quickly. And the cost is not very high. Like yeah. it's a very yeah. small cost. Yeah. So any questions? This yeah, was a open it up to the floor. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Dan has been putting in the chat, not questions, but some comments. He said Jira in chutney for Barra is always great. And he also says, ideally grind Jira fresh as needed. The oils will reduce. Yeah. Um, Another, if you do get ground cumin in the stores. I've seen a lot of packets, ground cumin. Don't try to roast that ground cumin already that is in powder form because it doesn't work it gets burnt faster. You saw when I did the whole cumin, it really cooks very fast. So if it's already ground, it just burns. You can't roast it. So if you're making roasted cumin, you have to get the whole cumin to roast it and then grind it after. Ground cumin does not roast well. That's good to know. Yeah. Um. And I'm so thankful to Black Creek for the workshop for canning. This is like the best thing I can do. Get the canning jars, make the free chutney, keep it for the year. It goes so well. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm in a pinch, I didn't have, yesterday I didn't have enough canning jars. I found those, uh, the ones, the empty jars from Ragu sauce or some other ones that have the lid that have little rubber thing inside. And I tried it and it can't, it's vacuum sealed. So we're good. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And because I, 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 I had the bottle, but I was looking for the lids. The lids, the canning lids are out of stock everywhere. They were on sale, no frills. I went to no frills three times during the week. They were not there, they were out of stock. I went to dollar store, I went to all different Dollarama, Chinese store, Dollar no tree. canning lids. I think the whole world is canning at this time now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like definitely gone up and I would hope that um, beyond COVID that food preservation is something that people could um, include into their like food repertoire just to reduce food waste, but also like mm, there's no need to um, rely on the global food system when we could make things our own. Uh no like the year. apples also this this time this year the this trail year. apples yeah, were not there year. last year when i made apple chutney it, it it was from the trail we go to there's a big apple tree which is just growing on the side of the trail humber, it doesn't humber belong to, yeah, it doesn't belong to anyone it's just beside the humber river it's beside the river and i had a lot of apples last year they were red i don't know what variety was it but they were just the perfect chutney apples sweet and sour but this year, that tree did not bear any apples. So we got it from the Black Creek. And Black Creek apples are also- And Mildred. Yeah, and Mildred <laughs> also, yeah. Um, okay, Etty said that no frills on Finch and Jane have those apples. Um, yeah, we'll go there then. Have those lids? The apples or lids, Etty? No, I'm, I'm looking for the canning lids. Yeah. Is it the flat top Vidala? You can buy them at Dollarama. I did. I went to the do two Dollaramas close to me. They were not there out of stock, they said. Uh, Vidila, Helen has a really great question. Uh, so she says, thank you for showing me how easy this is to make. Can you please tell me what meals you like to serve this with? Okay, so for, for me, this chutney is always on the table. 
So for breakfast, if we're eating sandwich, we usually eat sandwich and breakfast with some eggs and uh, tomatoes and Greens. all different things. My daughter, especially the younger people, and one of my friend's daughter, they always put on one side butter, on the other side chutney of the sandwich, and then whatever the filling in the sandwich. So we use it with bread. We use it with roti whenever we make our lunch or dinner, because the chutney jar is already on the table every time we make any meal. So they eat it with dal, roti, or rice, dal, chutney. It, it can go with anything. If you're making a wrap or a taco, yeah. instead of putting any dressing or a spread, you can put chutney on it. Because it's sweet and sour and salty, and you can modify the ingredients according to your own choice. If you don't like the cumin or black salt, as long as the sweet, sour, and salty is balanced, it comes out good all the time. I'm excited to try. Thank you. Oh, as he says, on samosas. Yes. Yes. It yeah. tastes really snacks. good on samosas any snacks. too. On any snack, samosas, pakoras, any snack. Helen says, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to Mildred just to keep in um, mind of time. And if there's any questions about the chutney, I'll go back to that at the end of the presentation. Um, so to introduce Mildred, for um, those of you who don't know her, she is um, the coordinator of the Urban Harvest Program, which is... Um, we use and so Mildred is an active resident, volunteer, and organizer in the Jane Fitch community for the past 10 years. Gardening and preserving food is a way of life for her and her family. Um, before doing the Urban Harvest Program at Black Creek Community Farm, she's been involved with a lot of grassroots and community organizing, um, such as the Parent Centers, the Moms Group at Black Creek Community Farm, and she's also a community facilitator in helping develop the Design for the Future Community Hub next to Metrolink storage facility, which is currently under construction. So she's done a lot of really great work. Um, Mildred, did I miss out on anything? No, you're, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you, okay, sorry, go for it. <laughs> All right, yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, glad you could join us for today's workshop. Uh, I know I have a big setup here happening, I don't have an assistant like uh, Vidula to move around the, um, the camera, but uh, I'll try to like tilt and show you the, the rest, the ingredients that uh, we'll be using today. So it's, it's kind of intimidating because I, my, my dining table is full, but you don't need all of this setup to actually make up apple cider. Uh, I'll try to make this, uh, the reason why everything is here is because I'm trying to show different ways how you can prepare apple cider. Cider, but I'm going to demo uh, something that is very like accessible, where everyone have access to a pot, um, to or to an equipment. So today I'm going to demonstrate how to make apple cider uh, using a stove top uh, method. But first, let's start with uh, the materials that we need. So you would be needing like a stock pot that's big enough to hold your apples. Um, we'll be using like 10 to 12 apples, so it should be like big enough to hold that and cover and put water in it to cover it. Um, so at least six quart, I would say. Uh, we would be needing um, a masher so that when the apples soften, we'll be mashing them to release all their juices and flavors further into the, into the stock. Um, I have this spider thing, right? The spider scoop. Uh, you can find it in Asian stores where it's very handy uh, for you to like scoop out all these um, apple chunks uh, later. Um, what else? You can use this instead of uh, the masher when you are like uh, pushing the apple slices against the stock pot. Um, so we have that and the rest are the ingredients that we need. So, of course, we, we, we need apples. This is a basket of apples that my son and I um, pick from our apple tree at the back. And um, so, just to let you know, 
um, you can tell me in the chat uh, if you have an apple tree in your backyard and if you find this apple tree like a, a problem or like a source of joy for you. As some people may not necessarily find uh, having apple tree or pear tree or um, cherry tree out in their backyard. This one, they might be a source of food for squirrels and people don't like squirrels or raccoons. So people, um, sadly, some people, they cut down their um, fruit tree because of this reason. Uh, another reason is people find it like um, a lot of them, they drop um, and litter the floor and people don't find this very appealing either. And uh, another thing is they don't know what to do with the apples, okay? That's why the Urban Harvest Program is here. And if you have an apple tree, pear tree, or cherry, and you want to donate your surplus apples, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, get in touch with us, and we'll tell you how we can like connect with you and pick up the apples um, at your convenience. So, so there you go. You can, so you can share your apples. Uh, a lot of people are scared of eating apples that is not uh, bought from the from the store for one reason they said oh it has worms in it okay and um, so we, we can't eat it actually apples uh, by nature they are very susceptible to diseases because well they have sugar they're sweet right so in nature you can't find apples that are perfect like the way we find them in the stores um, those are um, grown cosmetically because that's how society has designed us to like appeal to this uh, perfect looking apples but if it has worms in it that means it's it is healthy it's um it's good um it is uh, part of nature like what Vidula said and what you can do is you just chop off that part and you can use the rest of it either apple jam apple cider apple butter you can you can experiment with it apple chutney and so on and so forth so please don't throw your apples. Uh, we need those apples. There's another organization. It's, uh, it's called Not Far From The Tree. If you can't harvest your apples, they'll come and harvest it for you. They'll give you one third. They'll keep one third for their volunteers and they'll keep uh, one third for the food bank. So there's a lot of different ways to um, keep your apple trees and uh, uh, have the community like benefit from it. So today, we'll show you um, how to make apple cider. It's very easy. It's very family friendly. You can involve the whole family in this um, uh, activity. So let me continue on with uh, the rest of the ingredients. So we have the apples. Uh, this is, I think, Red Delicious. Uh, it's sweet. I have another apple here, uh, Granny Smith, which is tart. And there is another kind of apple that was donated to the program. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. And did you taste this? I'm not sure if it's uh, sweet. So the key to making apple cider is to have a combination of sweet and tart apples. Because you don't want it to be too sweet or too tart either. Okay? You want to serve it for your family and some like, uh, they want mostly on the moderate side, you know. So have some sweet and some have tart apples. Okay? And the rest would be like the spices. Uh, we have cinnamon. We have the cloves, whole cloves. Uh, we have some cardamom. Okay. So mostly these are uh, found in um, Asian stores, particularly Indian store. All spice is a dominant uh, also uh, spice among like uh, Caribbean cooking. So you can find it in uh, these stores that carry this uh, spices. I have here nutmeg and I have here um, ginger. Okay. Uh, I have sugar and honey. And lastly, to balance off like the apple, we need uh, um, orange. Okay. For this particular recipe, we will stick with like the classic, which is the, the cinnamon and then the cloves. Okay. It's up to you later to like add on, subtract, or add according to your preference. Okay. What I just want to like give as a tip, I would say, is when in, in the recipe that we were sharing with you, uh, use it as a guideline. Uh, it says there four um, cinnamon sticks. I would say start with two. 
okay? And it says there are also one tablespoon of cloves. I would also say that start with like half or even less because this would have a tendency to render the, um, the juice, the apple cider bitter. So just start on the, take it easy on these um, spices, all right? And another thing to lessen the bitterness in your um, apple cider is to also um, not include the peel of the orange. Sure, you can include it, like I, 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 I cut it up, okay? Cut it up and then like we'll put it later here in the pot, all in the pot. But you can also like uh, take out the rind and just use the um, the meat, the orange inside it. So I already have like cut um, apples in here. I took out the the bad part. So if I can show you an apple that's not perfect, if I cut it into two. Okay, there are some imperfections in it. So just cut that away. Okay. Uh, you don't need to core the apple because what would happen later as you boil it, you will pass it through a sieve. So that will do the job, okay? So just cut it, quarter it, and put it in here, and put two sticks, cinnamon sticks. Put um, half of the cloves. Um, this time, since this is like the third um, batch that I'm making, maybe I'll put some cardamom in it. All right. So it's not an exact science what I'm doing. It's by feel. You can put the sugar later on, or the honey. And right now, I'm just going to put um, some water. Okay. So it should be enough to cover the the whole batch of apples, okay? And we have to put like the cover. Now I made a batch uh, earlier, and this is what it looks like. They all look uh, mushy, so I can just lift some. So this, this is how it looks. So put it in the stove, let it boil, high heat initially okay once it reaches boiling point put it to medium low for two hours so high heat bring it to boil and then put it to uh, medium low for two hours let it simmer for two hours now you don't want it to be like boiling high because you want the insects to stay intact as much as possible okay so it, let it be in simmer okay and once you reach like two hours what you will do now is to smash the apples to the side, okay, press it against the side of the pot, like so, okay. So all of the, all of the pulps are being released and the juices and all the remaining um, flavors from the apples and oranges and the spice, basically. So did you know that apple cider is one of the most um, beneficial drinks actually? It's good for your gut. Okay. Especially um, apple cider that is not, um, what's that, that didn't undergo heat, which I will uh, show you later, okay? The thing with it is raw apple cider has a lot of like beneficial bacteria. So in the skin of the apple, there is a good bacteria that resides in it, yeast and bacteria. So it's good for you to like um, uh, drink that. A lot of what we buy fruits um, in the in the market is actually they were sprayed with pesticide, so you don't get that benefit. Okay, in terms of that's why that's the benefit of the organic vegetables, organic fruits. You have all these like beneficial bacteria that's wrapping up all these uh, fruits and vegetables. That's why you're able to like have sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, what you need is just salt. So how does it tra like it transform into a beautiful like um, what's that ferment later? It's because of the bacteria that is like in the skin of these vegetables. So it's the same with this uh, apple. It is thriving with beneficial bacteria. So that's why it's a, like it's a probiotic drink, and it's good for your gut. What I mean, if it's good for your gut. It's good for your immune system as well because that's part of your immune system. And right now, with all this coronavirus going on, people have become more interested in how to boost their immune system. And this fall, before we go into uh, 
hopefully not another um, uh, lockdown, let's boost up our immune system. And this is a good way uh, for us to like make use of what is available in nature. So um, I'm mashing it up, okay? And after I mash it up, you are supposed to simmer this for another hour, just so everything is just like released. Okay. But for today, the magic of uh, the magic of uh, today, we are going to shorten the process. Let's pretend this has already boiled for another hour. Okay, we will run it through a sieve, which I have here. And I have a sieve and a cheesecloth. Where is my assistant? My son is joining me today. So it's a little bit hot, so you can let it like stay. Stand, uh, let it stay and let all the juices just run through the sieve. Okay, so I have some, you can also like press, press down on the pulp to release more of the juices. And once you've done that, I'll show you the, how it looks. Okay. See how it looks? So you still have the fiber in it, okay? And uh, so that's the difference between apple cider and apple juice. Apple cider is basically um, uh, apple juice, but it's not filtered and it's not pasteurized, okay? Um, with apple juice, they have let it through a um, series of filtration, so all like the pulps you can't see, okay? But with this one, it is opaque, and you know that there's still like um, fibers that is in it, okay? At one point in history, actually, it's safer to drink apple cider um, than water because they are not so educated yet. There's cross contamination that used to happen in the drinking, um, in the drinking water. So it was safer to drink um, cider. And um, here in North America, when you say cider, uh, we the variation we are talking about is the sweet um, apple cider. But if you go to Europe, there it's more referred to as a hard cider, um, which is basically the same thing, but it has undergone through the fermentation process. So it's like grapes, you extract the juice, but then you let the yeast or the bacteria like ferment it to turn it into wine. And then if you let it uh, stay on, it will turn into vinegar. So that's the process. So apple cider, okay, which is unfiltered um, apple juice, it, it can turn into um, hard cider, and then eventually uh, it can turn into uh, vinegar. So here it is. Uh, you can sweeten it with whatever uh, sweetener you want. It can be, this is a sugar cane actually. It can be this one, or it can be uh, honey, or maple syrup. So I have a taster here. Let's see how this tastes. Sip. And you can tell them. How is it? Cinnamon. Cinnamony? Okay, it tastes like cinnamon. It tastes like Christmas, everyone. Mm. Mm, it's good. Yeah. So this is, um, the, I, I believe this is the most, one of the most accessible ways how to make um, apple cider through stovetop aversion. Now, are there other ways to how to make apple cider? Yes, there is. Um, if you have uh, one of these, Hold on. Um, slow cooker, other, some people call it crock pot. Uh, crock pot is a brand and it's, uh, it's, um, it's a type of slow cooker. Okay. So crock pot or slow cooker can be like made, the insert could be made of like uh, porcelain or uh, what do you call this, uh, ceramic. So if you say, technically speaking, if you say crock pot, they're made of ceramic or um, uh, porcelain um, insert, okay? 
and then the heating um, the heating um, uh, element goes at the bottom and around it so it has like an even heating but when you say slow cooker most of the slow cookers have a hot plate at the bottom and it just heats it from the from the bottom and the insert is mostly made of like stainless steel and uh, so that's the, the that's the difference but either way uh, what I'm using right now is a, a crock pot which is a for a type of slow cooker so you put it the same way you cut up all the apples all your ingredients and your spices put it in the in the pot and let it go let, it has two settings it has high and low if you put uh, it on high you can uh, run it for three to four hours if you put it on low it can run for um, six to seven hours so so just you can do your things uh, during the day you know cut it up in the morning let it simmer and then come back and then you have a juice uh, later in the day um, and uh, you don't have to like worry about it just let it um, set like this so easy peasy so that's one uh, can you give me so um, I know in the, the, this past I think in the past two three years there's been this uh, a new toy in the kitchen that especially I believe a lot of Indians have become crazy about it because Indians they use a lot of uh, pressure um, cooking methods am I right Vidula <laughs> so so yeah so and some people they're scared of pressure cookers so there is a brilliant Canadian who invented Instapot and I'm holding one right now and if you're scared of uh, pressure cookers this one you don't have to be scared about it's uh, fully digital and it doesn't um, explode okay it has come a long way so it's almost the same uh, way that you did the slow cooker you put everything in uh, spices uh, apples and oranges you put it in and you put it on manual. So there are some variations in the slow, uh, Instapot. You put it on uh, manual mode and set it for 25 minutes and uh, you're good to go. So if you need guidance on this, we'll also be uh, sending the link. I know we can't explain everything and we can't show everything, but there'll be a link that we'll be um, sending alongside this um, uh, recipe. So that is one or a third way. So, there is another way to extract um, juice from apple. If you have one of these juicers, okay, you can just like feed feed uh, the cut up quartered apples into the chute, okay, and uh, and get the get the juice out, okay. Um, uh, on the other side so that is one way to do it so as soon as you gather enough of the juice where is it? so once you gather all the juices in a pitcher okay so that is your raw apple cider what you will do is you will spice it up that's why it's called uh, mulled apple cider it's basically spiced apple cider you steep it into the spot you steep spice into it so get your raw apple cider put it in a in a pot and put the spices like uh, what you did before okay so let it like simmer on low don't let it boil and just it's just a way to infuse uh, the flavors and there you have the good uh, warm drink for the winter for the fall okay so that's another way to do it um am i good on time oh it's time <laughs> uh hey mildred yes thanks for that that was great for you to just share a lot of different methods using different equipment so people have access to it and whatever is most convenient for people um so i sent the link in the chat and some people do have some questions um helen was asking um if it's okay to freeze it like have you done it before sorry if it's okay to freeze so oh, yes um according to my research you can freeze it for three months in the fridge um is it okay to can it's okay to can i haven't uh, researched on that um aspect uh the thing is if you can it 
you will have to boil it and that's the enemy of the enzymes that you're trying to protect so i i wouldn't recommend that method so yeah but if if, if you can like look into that anybody can look into that um i will be open to all to learn yeah um, and Etty asks if she could use pears instead of apples. That is a good idea. Uh, I haven't done so, but if there is pear juice, if there is grape juice, apple juice, pear juice, um, why not pear? You know, so yeah, uh, we're open to like learning and experimentation. So have a try. Uh, Etty, I know that we have a lot of uh, pear harvest lately. So yeah, have a try and let us know. Sounds yummy, pear cider. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that, oh, what is the water ratio to be followed? Okay, so in the recipe, it says there are 16 cups of uh, water. However, it doesn't fit my uh, pot, so I just put um, 10 cups, um, which was actually uh, good because I, it's, uh, as it turns out, it's just it's just perfect. If I put more water, I would say it would be so diluted. So you can adjust the water. As I said earlier, it's not an exact science, so you can adjust um, accordingly. Like uh, in the in the Instapot and slow cooker, um, they you don't need a lot of water. But I would say if it's too um, concentrated, you can like dilute it like later on. So you can adjust um, accordingly. Cool. So the good uh, rule of thumb is that you could always add on more later, but you can never take it away. So you could always start with less. Yes, start with less. Correct. Um, so Helen says, I can't wait to try it. Thank you, Mildred. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> and Marlena says, You're fine? Maybe we'll just show you the setup that you made. So it's, uh, it's that's what I said, okay? Because my son is here. He actually set up uh, this one. We'll just show you. Just show and tell. Because this is one of the favorite items at the farm for kids to like do. So we're just gonna sh show it to you. So my son helped set this up. Oh, it's, uh, it's just what I said, okay? Because my son is here. He actually set up uh, this one. Oh, okay. So the way to use this is you have to grind your apple in uh, like a ninja or what is this, a blender or food processor. And then you put everything in here. And so this is called an apple press. And get, give me the rest of it. And you put a weight on it, like wood blocks. And there is a wrench to go around it to keep the pressure all the way down to be able to extract all the juice out. So this is just a way, a different way to also do it in a bigger uh, communal uh, uh, form. So this is quite expensive, but you can you might find it in uh, uh, on Gigi. So people are getting rid of it. So yeah, so this is, uh, so these are the rest of the parts and we we hope to be able to like, after COVID, maybe next year, we'll be able to like, do like a bigger batch with the community or with kids, okay? So if you don't have this, just extract the juice right this way. The same, like use a cheesecloth and extract the juice. Fre uh, freshly, uh, pressed um, apple. All right. There I got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Any comments or questions? I uh, I know it's a uh, three zero three. Um, is, is there last minute questions or add-ons? We want to learn from you as well. So you can like um, give us a feedback or comment. What have you learned from your own experience? We are open to that as well. 
you can go ahead and unmute yourself, um, Malti. Malti, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Um, we'll have Etty go first. Well, um, I, I want to say you are awesome. I always learn something from you guys. Thank you so much. I will try the, the um, cider with pearls and see how it goes. Terrific. We learn from you as well, Etty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I feel you. like making this apple cider right now with the some of the apples that I have because it's already cold. It's like it feel you feel like having nice warm drink. Yeah. Exactly. So it already feels like you want to have some apple cider. Yeah. And you if you want to like fancy it up and turn it into an adult drink, you can put some alcohol into it. So Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have I have I have my fermented kombucha too, so. Exactly. So after you extract uh, the juices, the apple juice, um, it's the same principle with the kombucha. You can add like yeast or let the ye natural yeast from the apple go and like um, follow uh, how you do the kombucha. So, yeah. yeah. Malti asked, a, oh, Marina, sorry, asked a really good question. She said, what's the best kind of apple tea for apple cider? What's the best kind of apple? Best kind of apple, or you mix the apples? It's mixed it's apples, right? whatever you have, um, uh, multi. But the principle is, uh, it's a mixture of sweet and tart apples. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can have like at least two varieties. Three is uh, even better. So yeah, get a mixture. But you do you have the recipe posted? Um, yeah, we we're going to post it. Yes. Okay. And also in the chat, uh, Malti, I, um, I posted at the beginning um, a doc where you could um, access the recipes. I'll just send it in the chat again so everyone can see it. Um, Helen asked a really good question. She said, can you use the pressed apples to make another recipe, like the squished fruit? Oh, yes. So you can, some people, they use it in their smoothies. Some people, they can uh, use it... Um, yeah, I've heard it. you can use it in smoothies and is it like a filling for um, apple pie? Like, but they have to like sweeten it or so. And you can put it in the, the, your compost if you can do it, uh, if you want to get rid of it, you know. Uh, but let me know. Like, I, I know uh, a lot of you have like, um, don't want food to go to waste. So it's open to brilliant ideas what to do with the pulp. Uh, I was thinking of apple leather. You can blend it put a little more sugar in it and dehydrate it. It's apple leather. Oh, yes. Because it has still a lot of sugar and flavor and the skin is still there. Correct. So and if you take out the seeds somehow, like you either you core the apples or you take out the seeds only and then you blend. And there's no harm eating apple seeds also. You blend it and make apple leather. It also goes nice with ice cream. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah that you're making it, you know, so you have it there, you have, you, you know, you have the apple cider and you have the other apple and it goes good with ice cream. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's full of fiber actually and pectin yes. in the skin. The apple has, uh, yes. has that, so. Um, you know, you can use it when you're baking. You can yep. use it in your cake, you can use it in your banana bread, you can use it anywhere you want it. It's there, good. it's coming from one of our bakers, yes. Yep. That's right. It's additional fiber for your baking. Right. Uh, so I'm going yes, to... Add one question, Mildred. If you're using the slow cooker, right? If you're using the slow cooker, do you have that procedure? Do you have the recipe for that? The methods in the slow cooker? Or it's just the same way? So yes, there in that recipe, it's, it's just a slight variation. So we'll send you, it's all in that uh, link that we will uh, send you. So it has stove top, slow cooker, and Instapot uh, uh, variation. I prefer, I prefer the slow, slow cooker. Okay. Because so, I have one, I haven't used it, so it's sitting there, so give me a chance of using it. Exactly. But I really love apple cider. Yeah, you can leave it and like just come back to it after um, a few hours, yes. 